For the first time in 40 years, the UK is having to think seriously about its own trade policy. Until now, the EU has been responsible for the conclusion of trade agreements with other countries. But now the UK faces the prospect of concluding a new trade agreement with the EU, setting out our relationship, as well as concluding trade agreements with non-EU countries with whom we may want to forge stronger economic ties like India or the US. The rules that will apply to the UK's trade with others will be those of the World Trade Organization. Politicians and policymakers frequently refer to falling back on WTO rules or WTO law permitting certain things, usually as an alternative to the membership of the single market. In this video, we're going to look a little bit at the WTO, what it does, and why it matters to the UK. Outside of the EU, UK trade will be governed in the first instance by the World Trade Organization, an international organization with 164 members, including the UK, which together covers about 95% of global trade. So what is it? It's an international organization dedicated to encouraging freer trade. It's a forum where governments across the world can discuss trade matters, and it also provides a set of rules for trade and a place to resolve trade disputes. The WTO contains rules to liberalise trade in both goods and services by reducing trade barriers and includes a detailed set of rules on accessing foreign markets and ensuring non-discriminatory treatment. It's similar to the, to the EU in that it seeks to redress trade barriers between members, but it is frankly less demanding. Members can maintain taxes or tariffs on goods coming into their market, but they fix or bind them at a certain level. Members then negotiate their tariffs down over time in what are called negotiating rounds. In the old days, tariffs were relatively high and of great concern, and while they're still relevant in some sectors, like agriculture or the car industry, they're now pretty low. WTO rules try to keep them there and restrict members from increasing them to protect domestic industry without a good reason, which are set out in the rules. Another key way that the WTO encourages freer trade is by discouraging discrimination, that is, between foreign and domestic products. Goods, for example, can't be taxed differently depending on if they're foreign or domestic, the aim being to encourage an open trade system where manufacturers and producers compete on the basis of how efficiently they make things rather than where they come from. Increasingly, to limit trade barriers or discriminatory measures, WTO law has had to go deeper into what governments do. For example, as a consumer, you might be happy that your government is regulating how cans of tuna are labelled, distinguishing between ones that are dolphin-friendly and ones that aren't. But if you're a foreign tuna exporter, that regulation may have been developed in a way to benefit domestic fishermen from that perspective, the environmental objective is just a smokescreen for what government is really trying to do. So WTO law tries to manage these disputes by balancing legitimate government objectives with arbitrary or unjustified restrictions on trade. And where there are disputes, as inevitably often arise, the WTO lets members raise legal claims against each other, enforcing their rights under trade law. This system has been comparatively successful with developed and developing countries raising claims. If one side loses, if they don't comply, their goods can then be subject to increased tariffs as a way of forcing them into compliance. There are a number of areas where WTO will play an important role specifically for the UK. As an independent member within the WTO, the UK will have to have representatives and the committees at the institution itself, as it will be necessary to negotiate with everyone and respond to concerns early on. This is important as many government policies have WTO dimensions. For example, any proposed new sugar tax to combat increases in diabetes and obesity rates raises questions of WTO law, as it may indirectly advantage domestic producers of sugary products. Or if the government wants to protect the UK steel industry from cheap Chinese steel, there are detailed rules on how you determine if the imported steel is too cheap and if there are unfair trade practices going on. Unsurprisingly, in order to stop countries from introducing these sorts of restrictions on imports whenever they want to protect domestic industries, the WTO sets out requirements for the introduction of such tariffs. Or if the UK wants to restrict imports on the basis of health concerns, such as fears over genetically modified organisms or growth hormones in beef, it is necessary to show that there are sound scientific grounds for this decision. Mistakes means having to face a legal claim, decided in Geneva by a panel of trade law experts in the first instance, and a standing appellate body, essentially a world trade court, if there is an appeal. The WTO is going to pay an important role in the UK both in offering opportunities to negotiate with other members and raise claims where it's not happy with others complying of trade rules, but also as a limitation on what government can do, as it'll have to pay attention to WTO law when introducing new tax measures, responding to unfair trade, introducing subsidies, health protection or technical regulations. The UK has always been a member of the WTO, but it's only now that we're going to have to pay much more attention to it. 